What did pretrial chamber one decide on the case against Al Sanusi? On 11 October 2013, the pretrial chamber one of the International Criminal Court decided that the case against Mr. Al Sanusi is currently subject to domestic proceedings conducted by the Libyan competent authorities and that Libya is willing and able genuinely to carry out such investigation. Hence, the case against Abdullah Sanusi has been found inadmissible before the ICC, in accordance with the principle of complementarity which is enshrined in the ICC Rome Statute. The Chamber took into consideration, among other factors, the quantity and quality of the evidence collected as part of the investigations related to Mr. El Sanusi, the recent transfer to the accusation chamber of the case against Mr. El Sanusi and his other 37 co-defendants, the example of certain judicial proceedings conducted to date against other former Gaddafi era officials, and the efforts made to resolve certain issues in the justice system in Libya by recourse to international assistance. What is the principle of complementarity? The ICC is a court of last resort. It does not replace national criminal justice systems. Rather, it complements them. It can investigate and, where warranted, prosecute and try individuals only if the state concerned does not, cannot, or is unwilling genuinely to do so. This is known as the principle of complementarity under which priority is given to national systems. States retain primary responsibility for trying the perpetrators of the most serious crimes. Is the decision on the El Sanusi case final? No, the prosecutor and the defense may appeal this decision. If an appeal is filed, the ICC appeal chamber will receive observations from the other parties and from the Libyan authorities and will make a final determination in due course. In addition, as noted by the chamber, Article 1910 of the Rome Statute provides that if the court has decided that a case is inadmissible, the prosecutor may submit a request for review of the decision when he or she is fully satisfied that new facts have arisen which negate the basis on which the case had previously been found inadmissible. The prosecutor may therefore seize the chamber with a request for review of the present decision as appropriate. What did the chamber decide on the case against Saif el Islam Gaddafi? On the 31st of May 2013, the pretrial chamber 1 rejected the challenge to the admissibility of the case against Saif el Islam Gaddafi. The chamber found that the evidence submitted was not sufficient to consider that the domestic and the IC proceedings cover the same case and thus concluded that Libya was unable genuinely to carry out the proceedings against Mr. Gaddafi. The judges acknowledged Libya's effort to restore the rule of law. The chamber, however, stressed that the Libyan state continues to face substantial difficulties in exercising fully its judicial power across the entire territory, and this impacted on Libya's ability to secure the transfer of Mr. Gaddafi into state custody and created impediments to obtain the necessary evidence and secure legal representation for Mr. Gaddafi. Libyan authorities appealed this decision. The appeals chamber will issue its final determination on this appeal in due course. Why did the chamber reach different conclusions on similar cases? In considering a challenge to the admissibility of a case, the pretrial chamber has to check whether there is, at the time of the admissibility consideration, a national investigation covering the same case and whether the national judiciary is willing and able to genuinely investigate the case. Considering the case against Saif islam Gaddafi, pretrial chamber 1 found that Libya had not submitted enough evidence to support that the domestic and the IC investigation cover the same case. Conversely, Libya attached additional evidence in its challenge to the admissibility of the case against Abdullah al-Sanusi and such evidence allowed the chamber to conclude that indeed the domestic proceedings in relation to al-Sanusi does cover substantially the same alleged conducts as that in the charges brought before the ICC. In addition, unlike the case against Mr. Gaddafi, where Libya did not satisfactorily demonstrate that it had collected more than a few sparse items of evidence as part of its investigations, 
Libya provided a considerable amount of evidence related to Al-Sanusi case. Based on a thorough examination of the submissions and evidence presented in the context of each challenge, the pretrial chamber reached its conclusion, rejecting the challenge to the admissibility for the proceedings against Saif al-Islam Gaddafi and accepting it for the proceedings against Abdullah al-Sanusi. However, these decisions are not final. Libya appealed the decision regarding Mr. Gaddafi. The prosecutor and the defense of Mr. al-Sanusi may appeal the decision regarding the latter's case. Will the ICC prosecute other individuals for the crimes committed in Libya after the revolution? The ICC prosecutor indicated in her last report to the United Nations Security Council that her office continues the investigations related to the crimes committed in Libya since 15 February 2011. She also stressed that her office is aware of allegations of serious crimes committed by former Gaddafi officials some of whom are now outside of Libya. She is currently engaged in the process of documenting the most serious of those crimes and documenting the current activities of those officials who were most responsible for them. The Office of the Prosecutor plans to take a decision regarding a second case in the near future and will consider additional cases after that depending on the government of Libya's progress in implementing its comprehensive strategy. The Office of the Prosecutor also continues to be concerned about the allegations of crimes committed by rebel forces, including the expulsion of residents of Tawerga, who have been unable to return home, and with ongoing alleged persecution of ethnic groups perceived to have been affiliated with the Gaddafi regime, and specific incidents as yet unaccounted for, like the alleged execution of 50 persons on the grounds of the Mahari Hotel in Sirte in October 2011, and alleged arbitrary detention, torture, killings, and destruction of property that arose during the operations in Bani Walid in September 2012.